Hello everyone. Today's video is the final video in our series about database anonymization called Differential Privacy. This video is part of a series about database anonymization. If you haven't watched the previous two videos on K-anonymity and L-diversity, anti-closeness, I would encourage you to do so. You can find links to the videos in the description and on the top right corner of the video. Differential privacy has been introduced in 2006 by Cynthia Walk, and it is the first successful attempt at quantifying privacy risks associated with privacy-preserving data publication. I will not go into too much detail in this video. Let me know if you want to have a deep dive into the theory. In this video, I explain the concept and techniques used to achieve differential privacy. Before we look at a concrete example, let's look at a scenario. A user enters some data into a database. To achieve differential privacy, the data gets perturbed. In this case, there is noise added to the data on the server. Now, this model is called global or centralized differential privacy. If an analyst now wants to run queries on the data, such as count or mean, he will only receive noisy results. We will look in detail how these results might look like shortly. Another important concept is local differential privacy. In that case, data gets perturbed on the client side for example, on his smartphone. The noisy data is then sent to the server. For the analyst, not much changes. They still receive noisy answers, but the noise is much more severe as it has been applied on a local level rather than a global one. Let's look at a practical example with our trusted database on medicine data. If we anonymize and generalize, you remember that this table is 3 anonymous, 3 diverse and t close regarding salary and diseases. Now we want to improve our data subject's privacy by applying differential privacy to the salary. How do we apply the noise? Where do we take it from? Without going too much into detail, we draw the noise from the Laplacian distribution. Here you see a Laplacian distribution for different values of epsilon. Epsilon is the privacy parameter of differential privacy. In red, you see the results of me running the Laplace algorithm with an epsilon of 0.5 and taking 9 samples. I now simply add the salary and the noise values. You can see here that this salary is now at the minimal value of 3. Otherwise it would be 0 and therefore not be a real value in the context of salaries. Noise can also be so large that values can become negative. You have to keep that in mind that you cannot apply differential privacy blindly. We now applied global or centralized differential privacy. If an analyst now queries the mean salary from the data, he would receive a mean of 7 if the database would be unperturbed. With our differentially private database, he would now receive 7.44, which is not that far off. However, we see a problem when we apply the max function. Originally, the maximum salary was 11k. Under DP, this becomes 15k, which is a huge difference. We will talk about the implications of this later. Let's first look at how to perturb categorical data, such as diseases. Here we can apply a technique called randomized response. The idea of randomized response comes from social studies. Researchers learned that participants lied when being asked sensitive questions. In order to mitigate this problem, randomized response has been introduced. The idea is trivial. Before answering, the participants flip a coin. Of course, the researcher asking him must not observe this process. If the coin lands heads, the participant answers truthfully. If it however lands tails, the participant flips the coin again. If it now lands heads, he answers yes. If it lands tails, he answers no. There is no way of knowing whether his answer is true or determined by random chance. This example of randomized response gives 75% chance of the answer being the actual answer with 25% of being the wrong one. How can we apply this to our diseases? Remember our hierarchical disease domain. One possible solution would be for a medical examiner who fills the database to say that if a coin flip comes up heads, we report the actual disease. If it comes up tails, we flip the coin again, and if it comes up heads, we still report the actual disease. If it comes up tails, we choose a disease from our hierarchy at random. A possible result can be seen here. If an analyst now wants to query what is the most common disease, he originally would receive three equally frequent diseases. For our noisy database, however, there is only one maximal disease remaining. Already a huge difference for any analyst. Randomized response is used in local differential privacy. 
Differential privacy is a technique that wanders around the edges of utility and privacy. There is minimal disclosure risk if you change all your data, however, the utility also becomes limited. DP is used when a lot of data is available, for example, at Google, Apple, Uber, just to name a few. That concludes today's video and the series on database anonymization. Thanks for watching, tell me in the comments which topics you would like me to cover, like and subscribe to the channel and see you in the next video.